Hello. I want to read some stories today, and I have a few picked out that I hope you'll enjoy. The first one is about a boy, a dog, and a balloon. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's about, there's a dog in this one. Do you want to read it too? I thought you might. Alright. This one is called The Blue Balloon by Mick Inkpen. The day after my birthday party, Kipper found a blue balloon in the garden, which was odd because the balloons at my party were red and white. Hmm. The Blue Balloon. The day after my birthday party, Kipper found a soggy blue balloon in the garden, which was odd because the balloons at my party were red and white. I blew it up. At first I thought it was just an ordinary balloon, but now I am not so sure. It is shiny and squeaky and you can make rude noises with it. And if you give it a rub, you can stick it on the ceiling, just like an ordinary balloon. If you find a balloon in your garden, do not blow it up. You should probably just throw it out. But there is something odd about my balloon. It doesn't matter how much you blow it up. It just keeps on getting bigger and bigger You see, it never ever bursts. Never ever. I have squeezed it, squashed it, and whacked it with a stick. I have kicked it, run it over, and stretched it. And Kipper has attacked it. But it is indestructible. I think that my balloon has strange and wonderful powers. The other day, it disappeared completely. And when it came back, it was square. And this morning, when I was taking it for a walk, it decided to take me for a fly. It took me up and up and up. Oops. And finally, down. It was quite a trip, but we were back in time for tea. Where did they go? So, if you find a soggy old balloon, Whatever you do, don't throw it away. Especially if it's a blue one. You never know what it will do next.
the end. Now, there is a point to that story. Oh, thank you for joining us, by the way. There is a point to that story, and the point is not find garbage in your garden and blow it up. No, 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 no. In fact, you, if you do find a soluble balloon, let me say it again, you should probably throw it away. But that story talks about an ordinary object, or something that seems ordinary, that turns out to be extraordinary and really wonderful. Like in this next story, a scientist is working to find medicine and a cure for something, and he ends up finding it in the very unexpected place, but something he thinks is not very useful but turns out to be really important. This story is called The Mold is Useless. Before we begin, there are rabbits in this story. It looks bad for the rabbits, but everything turns out okay. The mold is useless. There must be an answer, the doctor muttered to himself as he slipped another slide under his microscope. There must be... The doctor yawned. It was getting late and he was tired. For years, the doctor had been searching for an ideal germ killer. Carbolic acid was strong enough to kill germs, but it was so strong that it killed the healthy tissues in a person's body, too. The doctor was trying to find a germ killer that would not injure healthy tissues. He had been trying all kinds of chemicals, putting a drop of this or that on a slide where there was a culture of germs. But each time he had examined the slide to see if the germs had disappeared, he found that one chemical after another was useless. The doctor worked late into the night. Finally, he sighed and rubbed his eyes. He was too tired to work any more that evening. He gathered some glass slides and dirty test tubes together, carried them over to the sink, and started to wash them off under hot water. Next, he picked up a small dish in which he had been growing a culture of deadly germs. The whole culture was ruined because a spore, a tiny seed-like object, had blown in through an open window and fallen into the dish. The spore had started to grow and the doctor could see a lump of greenish mold right in the middle of the dish. The mold looked very much like the mold that appears on stale bread. The doctor was a thrifty man. He hated to waste anything. He, also, he was also a scientist, and scientists are usually very curious. The doctor decided not to throw the dish away. Instead, he took it over to his work table to see what the mold looked like through a microscope. He placed a small sample on a slide under the microscope. Then he looked into the eyepiece and saw the mold magnified many times. The doctor moved the slide and peered into the eyepiece again. He was not certain that he could believe his eyes. The mold should have been surrounded by the deadly germs, but the germs had disappeared. It was as if someone had taken an eraser and rubbed the germs completely off. The doctor became more and more excited. Unless his eyes deceived him, this strange mold had destroyed those deadly germs. But he was a careful scientist. He did not jump to conclusions. He made careful notes of what he saw. Weeks passed and he worked cautiously. It was possible that this strange green mold was just what he had been searching for. He watched the mold carefully, letting it grow. Then he put bits of it in with cultures of the deadly germs. The results were amazing. The doctor found that this green mold was many times as good as carbolic acid and against some kinds of germs. But what if it is also as many, ti as many times as harmful to healthy tissues? Then it would be useless. On the other hand, it might not be harmful at all. There was only one way to tell. An experiment would have to be arranged. The doctor selected two rabbits. He gave one rabbit an injection of a harmless solution, and he gave the other rabbit an injection of the same solution with parts of the green mold dissolved in it. As the day passed, he watched the animals closely. Both seemed fine. The doctor worked late, and before he went home, he again looked at the two rabbits. They were both calmly eating their dinner, 
The doctor was excited. Things looked most promising. Still, the mold might be slow to act. By the next morning, he would know. The next day, the doctor hurriedly swallowed a cup of tea before he rushed over to the laboratory. He looked at the rabbit that had been given the harmless injection. It was hopping around the small cage. Then he walked over to the second cage and peered in intently. His heart almost stopped. He saw a bundle of white f fur lying in the corner. A strange mold is useless, he thought. But suddenly, the doctor noticed that the rabbit's ears twitched, and that the rabbit's body was rising and falling as if it were still breathing. The doctor knocked gently on the side of the cage. The rabbit opened its eyes and hopped over to the doctor looking for carrots. The rabbit was not sick after all. It had only been sleeping. Now this is based on a tr this is based on a true story that actually happened. Let me tell you about that. The doctor in this story was Dr. Alexander Fleming. The green mold that accidentally started to grow in Dr. Fleming's laboratory in London, England, belonged to a family of molds called Penicillium, later known as Penicillium notatum. Dr. Fleming called this germ-killing material that he extracted from the mold penicillin. He reported his discovery in 1929, but it took 10 years before the life-saving drug could be made in large quantities. Other scientists helped Dr. Fleming solve this problem. For their work, the, the scientists received the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1945, and Alexander Fleming was made a Knight of the British Empire. There he is as a younger man. And there is one of his original drawings of the penicillin mold. So something very ordinary, that mold he thought would be useless, turned out to be extremely important. <clears throat> Another quick note about penicillin is that it is an effective drug, and at the time, it was so effective people thought it was called it a miracle drug. Um, now, if you noticed in this story, even though it looked like a miracle, um, remember it took it took a lot of careful observation from that first time he noticed that mold to the time he published his paper explaining his results to the time it was actually produced for people to use. It took a long time. It was not just he discovered the mold and suddenly half the diseases in the world were cured. No, it took a lot of time to make sure everything did not harm anybody and that it worked as well as he thought it would. Another note about penicillin is it turns out um, it is still effective for, tre for treating things, certain things, but it only really works on bacteria. It doesn't really work on viruses. And some people are actually allergic to it. And um, and also, oh, uh, that's right. And another thing is that as we've used penicillin more and more, some of the bacteria that, uh, that it was worked against have developed resistances, which means that penicillin doesn't work as well against them as it used to. But it still can be used for um, it still can be used against diseases such as strep or uh, any staph infections. It still can be good for uh, for fighting against those. I just thought today's two books were really interesting examples of how ordinary objects can really turn out to be extraordinary. That's all I have for today. Thanks for listening.